Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome to PTP OG, Practicing the Presence of God, Pastor Michael Hayes. Back with you today, it is a Tuesday morning, it is a cloudy and rainy Tuesday morning, and cool Tuesday morning here uh, in downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but we're glad to have you with us. Pastor Michael Hayes, I'm pastor of the Hillcrest Seventh-day Adventist Church, and so glad here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, by the way, and uh, glad to have you. How are things going with you in your neck of the woods? I'm glad to see you are with us. <clears throat> uh, so much happening uh, in our world today. As you know, it is Tuesday, and to, today, um, uh, this evening, I believe, is going to be the uh, uh, the first debate uh, for the presidential uh, election. Uh, and I'm not sure what time that comes on. I think it comes on about 8 o'clock or something. I'm not sure. But anyway, I know a lot of people will be watching. Uh, this is probably the most important election of our lifetime, of my lifetime, certainly. Uh, it really... Uh, really going to be an amazing thing to see who wins this thing. Good morning, Smitta. Good morning, Tina. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, uh, you know, of course, we want to keep abreast of what's going on. So, yeah, the election, uh, the, the, uh, the debate will be happening tonight between uh, Joe Biden and uh, Donald Trump. And uh, you think it comes on at nine, Smitta? Okay. So, uh, you know, uh, take that, take that for what it is. Uh, today is an uh, interesting day in my world. Uh, our street right now uh, is being paved, so uh, I can't park in front of my house. Uh, my wife and I had to move the cars on yesterday, uh, so you know. In order for us to leave or come back or go or anything, we've got to walk half a block to go to our car. Uh, but right now they're outside paving and it uh, looks like they're going to be paving our street for about two or three days. So uh, you guys keep us in prayer. <laughs> I get so tired of, uh, you know, the thing about Pittsburgh is, is the parking, man. It is one of the most difficult places to find parking, even for your own home. Uh, you know, unless you live out in the suburbs or somewhere. I live in the city now. I used to live out in the suburb, but I live in the city now. And because I live in the city, uh, parking is just, I mean, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So you guys know some of the uh, trials that I've had with uh, parking issues. Uh, you remember I had to pay almost a thousand dollars to get my car out of, uh, out of Hawk in terms of, uh, park parking tickets that, uh, I received right here on this street. So, uh, I pray that that doesn't happen any, again, anytime soon, cause, uh, can't afford that. But nonetheless, I digress. Let's go to our word for the day, which is found in Proverbs chapter 24, and we are looking at verse number 10, Proverbs chapter 24, reading verse number 10. The Bible says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Today we're speaking from the subject, no time to faint. Let's bow our heads. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your power and uh, your sustaining strength that, Lord, you give each and every one of us. Lord, we're going to talk about that just a little bit this morning. So I ask God that your presence and power be with us and help us to uh, deliver your word in clarity and in clear tones that all of us can hear, understand, and apply uh, your truth to our lives. We thank you, Lord, and please give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> amen. So, 
Um, no time to faint. You know, great men and women, great men and women are not necessarily the greatest talents or the ones with the most abilities. Uh, they're not necessarily the most athletic or the tallest or the strongest uh, in terms of muscle and power. Oftentimes, great men and women are simply people who just learned how not to quit. They learned how not to faint. They are overcomers. They ignore the difficulties and tiredness and the fight opposition brings. They know negative events will come and they prepare for them and they fight through them. That's what great men and women do. That's what overcomers do. Only the weak, only the weak fail or quit when the going gets tough. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I know, you know, and I know that none of us like adversity. Nobody likes adversity, right? No, none of us likes uh, to deal with opposition. We just don't. We don't like affliction. We don't like difficulties and hardships and danger. We, we don't like these things. And if <laughs> most of us had our way, we would all avoid it. And it's easy for us to resent it even at times, to having to go through all of these things. But here's what we find. Truly, these trials, these you know, controversies that we face, these walls that we oftentimes hit on our journey, uh, these afflictions that happen to us, the difficulties and the hardships that we have to traverse. Ladies and gentlemen, it truly reveals the measure of our strength and our faith towards God. So adversity has a way of best proving what our godly integrity is all about. It shows us whether or not we have perseverance. Solomon said, if thou faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Now notice, I want you to see this. He says, if you and I faint in the day of adversity, if you and I faint in a time of difficulty, if you and I give up, if you will, throw up our hands in a time where hardship happens. He says our strength is small or some might say weak. But ladies and gentlemen, I like this. I like this. He doesn't say you don't have any strength. He says your strength is weak. Your strength is small. <laughs> I love that. I love that. In other words, <laughs> you've got some strength. It's just not strong enough yet. It's small, it's not big enough yet. So what that tells me is, is that I've got something to work with. Touch the person next to you, tell them, I got something to work with. I know you don't have anybody next to you, but I just like saying that. <laughs> Touch yourself on the back and say, I've got something to work with. Yes, I've got something to work with. I have strength, yes I do. You and I, we all have strength. And that strength comes from God. It comes from our faith in God. Without adversity, ladies and gentlemen, how would we even know where our strength level is? How would we know where our faith level is? Without adversity, without controversy, without trials, without opposition, without people working against us, how would we know how strong our faith is? We could talk about it all day, but talk is cheap. We could believe that we've got strength, but we wouldn't really know until our faith is tested. We really don't know. Am I right or am I wrong about it? You have to be tested. All of us have to be tested. My sons, they can't stand, they hate tests. They hate it, but tests, ladies and gentlemen, reveal how much of the information 
from schooling you have received. You can't just say, well, yeah, I took the class. What do you know about the class? And some of us are like that with God. We're like, well, I took that class with God. I, I, yeah, I, I've learned that. Have you really? Well, the best way for you to know whether or not you took that class, whether or not you've overcome that trial or that, dare I say it, that temptation in your life, is to be tested on it. A lot of us wonder, why does God always allow me to be tempted in this area? Because you got to be tested, honey. You got to be tested, honey girl. <laughs> Homeboy, you got to be tested, bruh. Yes, you have to go through. You have to overcome. You have to be tried in the fire. All of us do. And ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Point number one is this. Every Christian, every Christian must meet adversity. There are no, no uh, 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 shortcuts to faith. Uh, there's no going around this or that to gain faith. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way at all, ladies and gentlemen. You don't get an inheritance of faith. I wish I had help in here today. You don't get an inheritance of faith. You might get an inheritance of money. You might get an inheritance of, of, of land or, or whatever the case may be, jewels or diamonds. You might get an inheritance of, of wealth, but you're not, you cannot get an inheritance of faith. Faith is your own under is your own experience. It's your own trial and error experience. It is your own relationship with God, your personal relationship with God. That's why your grandmother cannot give you her religion. She can't give you her faith. Your mama can't give you her faith. Your daddy cannot transfer his faith unto you. He can give you an example of what faith is is like of what faith should be, but he cannot transfer his faith to you. There is no hand-me-down faith. When I was growing up, you know, I was the third boy in a line of three. And you know, uh, <laughs> if, if, if any of you know, if you've been uh, in a house with many siblings and you're one of the, one of the, ones that are at the back end of the line, you know that you get something called hand-me-downs. Hello, somebody. You get the old toys and the, <laughs> the broken Hot Wheel and the, the messed up uh, 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 <laughs> the messed up bicycle uh, pedal. And it, it, somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. You get the hand-me-downs. You you get the old basketball shoes that your that your oldest brother doesn't want anymore. You 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 know they don't buy nothing new for you. <laughs> You get the hand-me-downs. <laughs> but eventually, eventually, you start having your own stuff. And you start trying your own ways out. You start trying your own stuff out. Huh? Eventually, you got to work your own salvation out with fear and trembling. Somebody said, I believe it was Paul, you've got to work out your own salvation. You can't you know, jump in on the on the fumes, on the flames of your mama and your daddy's salvation. You, you have to have a saving relationship with Christ for yourself. And that faith, that relationship is going to be tested. You are going to have adversity in your life. A lot of people think that, well, you know, I'm a Christian. Now things are going to go well. No, 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 not necessarily. No, honey, no. Now you've got a target on your back. Now the devil knows exactly who you are. Huh? Now the enemy of God really has a reason to come on against you. And you're going to be tried. We are going to be tested. We're going to meet with adversity. Psalm 34 verse 19 says this, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him or her out of them all. Yes, yes. Many are the afflictions, the psalmist says, of the, of, the, of the righteous, of those who are seeking after God's righteousness. Many are the afflictions, the trials, the difficulties, the hardships, 
Many of are the opponents, if you will, the enemies of the righteous, those who are trying to do what's right and seeking to live a righteous and holy life. You're going to have all kinds of opposition. You're going to have all kinds of people that don't like you just because you think you holy. You think you that. You think you that, all that. You think, you know, people don't like when you're trying to do right. It's amazing. That's the kind of world we live in today. We live in a world where when you're doing right, people think you're doing wrong. Oh, Lord have mercy. Woo. Lord have mercy. Don't get me started. Let me let me slow down. Let me slow down. We live in a world that's so corrupt, ladies and gentlemen, that when you are trying to do what's right, it's seen as evil. Are you listening to me today? That's how bad the world we're living in is. If you are going to live godly, you will suffer persecution. There's no doubt about it. If you're trying to live for God, live for what's right, if you're gonna, if you're trying to tell the truth, trying to live a transparent life, an example of Christ in your life, oh, you're going to meet opposition. Huh. Lord have mercy. There's gonna be things, situations where people don't like you especially people in power. John chapter 16, verse 33. Here's what Jesus said. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you might have peace because in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He says, I have told you the things that I've told you. I've spoken the things that I've spoken to you. I've shared the things that I've shared with you, talking to the, to the disciples and talking to us who are also disciples, who are followers of Jesus Christ. That's what a disciple is. Jesus is talking to us as well as them. Jesus is saying to us today, I've shared these things with you in my word. I've shared these experiences with you in my word. I've shared these stories with you in my word to leave an example for you to see that I have great peace. And if you live in me and not in the world, but if you live in me, if you abide in me, John chapter 10 says, abide in me and I in thee, we shall be one, God says, Jesus said. He said, if you abide in me, you're gonna have peace. Yes, you're gonna have tribulation in this world. Yes, you're gonna have trials and controversies in this world. He says, but be of good cheer because if you're living in me, you need to understand that I have overcome the world. I've overcome all the challenges. What does it mean to overcome? It means to never give up. That's what overcoming means. That's all it means. That's all it means. It doesn't mean that you were the shining brightest light in the house. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you were the best and the number one. It doesn't mean, ladies and gentlemen, that you won the race and beat everybody else out. That's not what it means. It means that you finished. That's what overcoming means in the Bible. It means you finished. You kept going. You didn't stop. You didn't quit. Somebody say amen out here. And unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we have too many quitters in the church of God. We have too many quitters, ladies and gentlemen, who used to be Christians. Now they're leaving the church. Now they're walking away from the church. Now they're leaving their faith and finding other places, ladies and gentlemen, of so-called safety and trust. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing else you can trust but God and his word. Come on, say amen. Ain't no need in leaving the church right now. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, Pastor Hayes, it's a lot of trials out here. I got a lot. I got to get myself together. Honey, you can't get yourself together. That's why you need to come to the Lord. You can't get yourself together. Hello, somebody. You need to come to Jesus. You need to commit yourself to a life of Christ-like living and do what God has called you to do. Come to a knowledge of who Jesus is, a saving knowledge of our Lord. and Build a relationship with him on a daily basis. That's what we do here at PTPOG, Practicing the Presence of God. We build a daily walk, a daily relationship with God. You know what? I've been so blessed as we have done these things, these uh, go-lives, uh, these, uh, 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 you know, these 
these sessions every morning. It's just, it's such a blessing. And it has built up a, a, a certain amount of faith in me, a certain amount of connection in me with God and his word. It's built up a, a relationship with God's word in my mind, in my heart. I mean, there's things that pop up in my mind from the word of God that I, I, I've forgotten about. I didn't even realize I knew it by this daily walking with God. I'm telling you, it just builds up a certain level of, of persevering resistance to the world around you, <laughs> if I could just put it in that fashion. I mean, it really, really is a blessing to share and to come together and read the word of God daily. It's just a blessing. It's powerful. And it has a saving power to it. I'm just telling you, it keeps you focused. It keeps your mind on what's really important. My God, I'll tell you right now, I, I you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. If, if we weren't doing PTPOG, I don't know how I would get through this COVID-19 situation. I mean, I don't know where I'd be. I mean, seriously, I, I mean that. I mean, I literally need the word of God every day. I don't know about you, but I need a word every day because, because every Christian must meet with adversity. Point number two, point number two. Many a strong Christian has fallen or fainted before. Oh, don't get it twisted, ladies and gentlemen. That's point number two. <laughs> don't get it twisted. I didn't say that you weren't going to fall. I didn't even say that you weren't going to faint. Are you all listening to me today? I didn't say you weren't going to fall or fail or faint or trip up or slip up or mess up. I didn't say that. I said you weren't going to give up. But ladies and gentlemen, all of us are human beings and every last one of us will fall at one point or another, or fail at one point or another, or slip up at one point or another, or mess up at one point or another, or ladies and gentlemen, we'll lose at one point or another. Are y'all with me today? Or we'll fall short at one point or another. Every one of us will fall. It's okay though, it's okay, it's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, many, many, many powerful men of God fainted. Notice with me in Numbers chapter 11, verses 11 through 15, the Bible says about Moses. Moses is, one, is probably my favorite character in all the Bible because Moses, you want to talk about somebody with perseverance. You want to talk about somebody with some patience. You want to talk about somebody with some faith, with some faith, leading a million people out in the middle of a desert with only God by his side. Are you all listening to me today? and a stick in his hand. I mean, that that's crazy. But ladies and gentlemen, he was crazy in his faith. Somebody say amen. He led these people to a beautiful place. Oh, but it wasn't easy. Oh, and ladies and gentlemen, there was a time when he was ready to faint. <laughs> Notice with me, Numbers chapter 11, verse 11 and through 15 says this, and Moses said to the Lord, Moses talking to God now, he says, wherefore hast thou afflicted your servant, talking about himself, and wherefore have I found favor in your sight that you might lay this burden of all these people upon me? He said, what, how in the world did you decide to make me the person to carry this burden of walking these children of Israel through the desert? He said, what, 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 what made you choose me? This is what, this is what he's saying to, G, to God. <laughs> Are y'all with me? This is what he's saying to God in prayer. Somebody say amen. I don't know if you've ever talked to God like this, but I have. What, what made you, what gave you the wild idea to make me the leader of all this crazy new bunch out here? <laughs> I love Moses, man, I'm telling you. I love Moses. He said in verse 12, have I conceived all these people? Did, did I birth all these people out? Do, do I have... Uh, uh, some paramours that I don't know about? Did I sleep with some folk that I don't know about? And a guy had babies by a bunch of women that I don't know nothing about? Because these ain't my children. Have I begotten them, he says? 
that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in your bosom as a nursing father bears the suckling child and the land unto the land which thou sawest unto thy fathers? Verse 13, where should I have, whence rather, should I have flesh to give unto all these people? He said, they're sitting over here begging me for flesh. He said, where am I going to get flesh to give all these people? For they weep unto me, saying, give us flesh that we might eat. I am not able to bear this people alone. This is Moses. I'm not able to bear these people alone because it's too heavy for me. And if thou deal with, with if thou deal thus with me, he said, listen, if you're going to keep me leading these people, he said, then kill me right now. <laughs> I love I love Moses. I love Moses here. Moses said, if you're going to have me carrying this burden by myself continuously on past this moment right now, he said, just go on and kill me because I'm done. I pray thee out of hand. Just I have found favor in thy sight. Let me not see my own wretchedness. He said, just, just, just please. He said, I can't take it no more. He said, I'm tired of being a failure leading these people. I'm tired of dropping the ball with these folks. I'm tired of misleading and misinterpreting folks and what they're trying to do. I'm tired of, uh, uh, of coming up short with these people with all their wants and all their needs. You know what? Just take me out, Lord. Just take me out of this thing. He was ready to faint. Lord have mercy. But God is good. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, notice with me, Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 14. We find somebody else, Jeremiah, who had time to faint, it would seem. It says that Jeremiah 20 verses 14 and 15 says this, Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. He said, Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying a man... A child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Listen, Jeremiah, Jeremiah was so worn out. He was so messed up. He said, I don't, he said, let the day I was born be cursed. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you've ever been to that level of depression, that level of of wanting to give up. Now, this is a prophet of the Lord. A prophet of the Lord. Are y'all listening to me? This man said, curse be the day I was born. And curse be the day that my father came home and was talking about, I got a new baby boy. He said, curse be that day. Because I'm feeling so bad. I'm going through so much. Lord have mercy. Notice with me, Matthew chapter 26, verses 73 through 75, here's what the word of God says. And after a while came unto him they that stood by and said to Peter, surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech betrays thee. This is when Peter was being tested for his faith. Are you all listening to me? When Peter made that clarion declaration, oh Lord, no matter what happens, no matter who tries to pull a sword against you, I won't let anybody touch you, Jesus. I won't let anything happen to you. I'm with you all the way, Jesus. That's what he told him. Oh, but when somebody asked him, aren't you one of them? It was a little girl, in fact. Don't, aren't you? You're one of those disciples. I saw you with him. For your speech betrays you. You sound just like him. The Bible says in verse 74, then began he to curse and swear saying, I don't know that man. I don't know that blankety blank blank man. And immediately the Bible says, the cock crew. Verse 75, and Peter remembered the words of Jesus and said, which he said unto him, before the cock crows three times, you will, de uh, before the cock crows, excuse me, you will deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Ladies and gentlemen, many a strong, many a powerful, many a wonderful leader in the Christian faith, many a godly man and woman have failed, have fainted. Are you all with me today? 
many have. Many have, in some sense, been ready to give up, but they didn't give up completely. Many a man and a woman of God have failed him, have failed his people. Many have messed up, but they didn't give up. They didn't give up on God, and God did not give up on them. Come on, say amen out here today. Ladies and gentlemen, point number three is this. Our purpose in trials is to learn to find our strength in God and not ourselves. Point number three, last point. Our purpose in trials and in conflicts and in hardships and in difficulties is to learn to find our strength in God and not in ourselves. When the Bible says here in Proverbs 24 and verse 10, if you faint, you have a little strength. It means that you haven't given up yet. Even when you faint, even when you fall out, that doesn't mean you gave up. It just means that your faith is low. This trial has come for you to learn to build a stronger bond of faith with God. Come on, say amen. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 11 through 13 says this, Now all things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. Be careful about believing that I'm never going to faint. Be careful about believing, oh, I'm never going to, uh, I'll never have that problem that sister so-and-so had. I'll never have that issue that brother so-and-so had. Be careful about thinking that way because all of us are human beings. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we can't judge other people. Hear me, hear me today. Please hear me today. Because the thing, the very thing that you're judging somebody else for having done Ladies and gentlemen, you will find yourself in the middle of doing if you don't watch it. Now, I'm telling you what I know, not what I think. Be careful, a man who thinks he stands. Take heed lest he fall. Be careful what you're standing on. Be careful whose ground you're standing on. You better be standing on holy ground. You better be standing on God's ground and not your own ground. Because I can tell you right now, Ladies and gentlemen, many of us have not yet met adversity to the point of blood. And to think, to think that I'm stronger than them, I'm stronger than her, I'm stronger than him, I'm better than them. Oh, look at them, they're terrible. To think like that, you're setting yourself up for a huge precipitous fall. Trust me, I've been there and I've done that. And you do not want to go there. Believe me, you do not want to go there. I have been there and done it, and I'm telling you, you don't want to go there. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Notice what the word says, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Hallelujah. Notice the way of escape doesn't get you out of the temptation, but it helps get you through the temptation, through the test, through the difficulty, through the hardship, through the trial. It doesn't take it out. It doesn't take you out of it, but his word, his presence gets you through it. The way of escape is like a trap door in the midst of the hardship of the trial where you go and you find a place of safety even though these things are still going on. You see, that's where we're in right now. It's no time to faint right now. It's no time to faint right now in the midst of this COVID situation and the craziness of this upcoming election, what's going on with the Supreme Court and all this other crazy stuff that's going on around the world. It's not time to faint. It's time to find a place of escape. It's time to find Jesus. It's time to open up the trap door and find a place of peace. It's 
time for us to learn to abide in him and him alone. It's time for us to live by way of his word because only God's word can be trusted. Can you say amen today? There's a lot of word out here. There's a lot of people talking. There's a lot of people speaking up, declaring what they think is true, what they think is right, what they think is holy, what they think is righteous. But ladies and gentlemen, only the Lord's word will last forever. Only the Lord's word is true and has always been true. And only God's word does not change. That's why we follow him. That's why we seek to know him. Because God is good all the time and God never changes. I can trust him to be exactly who he says he is. Amen. Psalm 34 verses 17 and 18. Our last text for the day before I let you go. Psalm chapter uh, division 34 verses 17 and 18 says this. Here's what it says. The righteous cry and the Lord hear it and he delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and saves such as are of a contrite spirit, a humble spirit, a broken spirit. Listen, God knows you don't have much strength left. You think he doesn't know? He knows. God knows. He knows that your strength is small right now. He understands. He recognizes that you're about to faint in the middle of this adversity. He understands. And God wants you to understand that he understands. God wants you to know that he knows. But here's what he also wants you to know. I'm still going to deliver you. I'm still here blessing you. I'm still, I'm still reaching out my hand to you. And I'm going to pull you through this, brother. I'm going to pull you through this, sister. I'm going to pull you through this. I am pulling you through this. Matter of fact, I'm the one that brought you to this point. I'm bringing you all the way through. Just keep trusting me. Keep holding on to me. Believe in me, he says, because I'm a deliverer. And I've never lost. I've never lost. Never lost a patient that has put their trust in me. I've never lost a patient that has put their trust in me. Let's put our trust in the word today. What do you say? Let's put our trust and our faith in him today. Let's open up that trap door right now and find that place of peace and safety found abiding in the life and the character of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. And that build that relationship with him every single day. What do you say? Let's find that escape route. What about you? Are you ready to find the escape hatch? Amen. No, it's not time to faint. It's time to find the escape hatch. Escape hatch in the word of the living God. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your kindness, your blessings. Lord, most of all, we thank you for that persevering power that you impart to us on a daily basis through your word. You give us, Lord, this stalwart perseverance, Lord, this stick to itiveness. You give us, Lord, this push forward when everything is telling us to go backwards. Lord, you, you just bless us, Lord, to be a people of greatness, a people who have learned to overcome by your grace. We pray that you will continue to bless us and empower us. And we thank you, Lord, for your mercies. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, God is good all the time. Amen. God be with you. I thank you so much for being with us today. If you have been blessed, please, please share this and like this and share it on your Facebook page. We love to uh, have you also, if you haven't already, be a part of our ministry family. You will be notified every day. If you do, just click 
on uh, the purple icon after you type in PTPOG in your search engine, click on a purple icon that represents our ministry page, the PTPOG, Practicing the Presence of God ministry page. Click on that and join us, and you'll be notified every single day uh, when we come online in the morning at 8.30 Eastern Time. We thank you so much uh, for your participation this morning. If you're watching by way of our YouTube channel, thank you. Oh, we're blessed to have you. We love to have more and new faces with us. God be with you. Please leave a comment down below if you've been blessed or if you have a comment or something to say. We'd love to hear from you and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's a new channel. We're trying to grow it as much as possible. God be with you. God bless you. Take care, guys. I hope you have a great and marvelous day. And please remember, it's no time to faint, but it's time for us to find the escape hatch in Jesus. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless you and God keep you. We'll see you on tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, 7.30 Central, 6.30 Mountain, 5.30 Pacific. Pastor Michael Hayes signing off. God bless. We'll see you soon.